All right, it is a Monday morning and you know what it means uh, when we get to this time. We get uh, an opportunity to delve into the news stories trending all around Mzanzi. And here to tell us a bit more about his insights, news editor Roy Simpson joins us. And we, of course, do encourage you to also join in on the, on the discussion by sending us your voice notes to 063-408-8863. And there's much to chew on, Roy. Oh, there always is. Uh, we know Budget Week is always a great week. Yeah. And we wonder if the, the Minister of Electricity is going to be stepping into that role as well. But um, before we get there, we, we love to focus on what's happening on the ground ground, not so much when it's affecting children in the way that we're seeing play out in Kyalicha at the mm -hmm. moment. Clearly there is a grievance amongst taxis. We've seen taxis blockading, preventing kids from getting to school, thousands of learners being affected. What is the grievance? What's been at the heart of the unrest as it stands? Well, every year the Provincial Education Department allocates uh, transport tenders and, and money to transport kids to and from school. And uh, I mean, I presume everyone knows that uh, there's also a system where in every metro, different parts of the metro are allocated to different taxi organizations. So down in Cape Town, there is Carter and Codeta, and effectively the city's divided up between them and Kailicha falls under Codeta. And they have now, if, if the province is to be believed, they have now decided they didn't take part in this tender process to, to get any of these contracts to transport these school kids. But Kai Licha belongs to them. They are the transport <laughs> provider. And therefore, they're, they're entitled to these contracts. And, and mm. what they did was they, they literally blockaded the schools and prevented scholar transport from dropping kids off. So basically, preventing kids from getting their constitutional right to education. <laughs> and at the same time, an implied threat. Well, I was going to say, because a yeah. situation like that can escalate very, very quickly. And the implication is that it will. If you do anything in response to this, it's going to get worse. You're looking at a taxi organisation that's been in a literal taxi war where people have been shot and killed yeah. before with a rival taxi association. Hmm. So you're looking at little kids, potentially, having to see some kind of violence. Yeah. Your other fear, of course, is that you've got sort of more matric age kids who might then involve themselves in yeah. this and get themselves hurt that way. So it's a very messy situation and uh, the taxi organisation not looking good here. Yeah, have there been any development over the weekend and is there any end in sight? <laughs> Answer to the first one is yes. Uh, late Friday, the uh, MEC for, for Education managed to get a court interdict, which prevents uh, Codeta, and they've, they've agreed to this, they're not allowed to blockade. Okay. And they're also not allowed to threaten the existing uh, operators. But there's a court case that lies ahead that this is sort of in abeyance until that court case gets decided. In terms of a resolution, mm -hmm. I'm not so sure. They, I don't think there's a win-win here. I, I think Cadetta have come across as really arrogant and out of line. And more importantly, while, while the ANC, which of course in the Western Cape is an opposition party, mm -hmm. while they've pulled in behind uh, Cadetta and said, look, there needs to be better consultation, I'm afraid that they have really, really angered the parents so they don't have community support. Uh -huh. So I think that they're probably in to lose this one. Well, well I, I very, very losing right now are the children who are exactly. absolutely to school. most importantly. Yeah. Of course, we'd love to hear from you as well. Do send us your voice notes on 063-408-8863. We'll be back again with Roy Simpson discussing some of the latest news headlines that have the nation talking. It's a Monday morning. Welcome back to your Feel Good Breakfast show as we continue our discussion over the news headlines that have had the nation talking over recent times. Roy Simpson, news editor, joins us this morning as we look forward to what will be a very interesting week in the South African context, mm. especially uh, post-SONA, uh, because the Minister of Finance will be delivering the budget speech this coming Wednesday, laying out all of government's spending plans for the year. Roy, the big question, what can we expect? I mean, we know we, have, yeah. Yeah, we already have two states of emergency underway, so... States lots, of disaster. States of disaster. All important difference. Different, <laughs> yes. So what are we expecting? What are we expecting? That's different from what we're wanting, of course. No, this is true. Uh, what we're expecting, we're expecting to see the budget deficit uh, be a bit smaller. So, uh, look, it's currently running at about 320 billion rand a year, so that'll come down a little bit. Uh, I still, government is still going to spend more money than it makes, though. It so has, there will yeah. still be a deficit. Mm -hmm. uh, other than that, it, one of the things, for example, that will drive us still having a deficit, a deficit is we've got to take on, we've got to take on the debt of ESCOM. Uh, and the last we were discussing, we were talking about sort of half their debt, so somewhere in the 200 billion rand range. Mm. That's got to be taken into the fiscus now, and we've got to work out how we're going to pay for that. Uh, so that's, that's the other thing. Um, beyond that, uh, oh, uh, of course, in Sona, uh, there was the promise that people with solar panels were going to get some kind of a tax incentive. Right. 
So we need the details of that. We need to know how much that is, how that's going to be allocated, and, and how that plays against ESCOM's desire to charge people <laughs> with, with solar, to have that solar. So, so that's going to be an yeah, interesting it, are, are we going to be charged or are you going to be selling your excess power to the municipalities so then you're making money, but if it's being subsidised by the government, do you really... What's yeah. going on? And, and is it possible that all of those might happen at the same time? So, uh, yeah. All of this says to me that there's going to be a considerable shift and everything is being gateway through a lot less now. Someone's going to be unhappy. More than one person is going to be unhappy. Who's not going to get what they want? What do you think is going to be the most contentious element come Wednesday? We have 25 million people dependent on uh, some kind of social grant. And, and civil society at large is pushing really, really hard for a basic income grant. Not mm. just the 350 rand a month. Basic that, that, income. So, so something much more substantial than that. And that movement has been growing <laughs> and it's been around for some time. I don't think they're going to get what, they, what they're wanting. Uh, I simply don't think that there's going to be, or, or, or the government at least is going to say, you know, God and Guan is going to say, there isn't space in the fiscus for know, that. Yeah. But at some point, we have to find space in the fiscus. So, so I don't think that's going to happen, which is going to disappoint people. Um, the other competing demands, well, we must never forget that land is always on the agenda. Mm. And, and I, we, we don't really see land coming up in the budget very often, but I think we're headed towards an election year. I, I think there'll be a lot of pressure for it, but again, like you said, I think they're going to be disappointed with what they get in terms of some kind of a budget allocation to sort out land redistribution. Um, and otherwise, yeah, ESCOM. <laughs> as, as you're saying that and you're talking about half of their debt being taken into the fiscus, obviously yeah. that's now on our backs. Absolutely. So the question yeah. is, where's all that money going to come from? How much more in taxes are we then going to have to pay? And are we going to, as a nation, then, you know, find kind of common justification that it makes sense for us? I don't quite know. Perhaps you can let us know what you think. 063-408-8863. Send us your voice notes. We'll be back again with Roy Simpson shortly. It's my feel good Welcome back to this Monday morning. We're still hanging out with news editor Roy Simpson and he's giving us his opinion on some of the latest stories that have had all of us talking. Previously, we covered the taxi blockades out in Kailicha and the upcoming budget speech as well. Now we move on to international breaking news Thank and of you. course we would like you to contribute to the discussion by sending us your voice notes to 063-408-8863. Now in the latest news Microsoft has been scrambling to reassure people about its Bing AI chatbot uh, and among other things apparently it's insisted that it is still 2022. <laughs> Not sure how that happened Bill but okay. No, no, now what's happening? Wait is it 2022? No. <laughs> let us move on don't, please. Don't go to Bing for the answer. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's the answer. No yeah that was a really weird thing. It, it yeah. absolutely insisted that uh, 2023 was a date in the future. And kind of more chillingly than that, it said to the person who was uh, in the argument with it, effectively, uh, no, trust me, I am Bing, I know the answer. Your devices, go check your devices' settings, they might be wrong. So, so the concept that the, the AI chatbot is wrong, it just doesn't exist within the chatbot's world. Wow. So you have to be wrong by definition, and that's, that's a bit chilling. Now, oh. is, this, is this kind of the start of Y2K, or is this the start <laughs> of Judgment Day? Like, well, how, how should we be viewing this? Is this Are the horsemen a, riding? Yeah, is this a little bit of a technical road bump, or is this something that potentially could lead to a bigger question? Because we do trust these these devices, these, these um, you know, platforms. I, I, I think I hear the clitter clatter of, of hooves somewhere <laughs> in the background. This is more Armageddon-y. Because uh, these, these are going to become more and more ubiquitous. We're going to rely on them more and more. So part of the whole idea of these AI chatbots is you can ask them quite complex questions. Yes. So you could ask them, for example, to write you an essay on a topic, and it would then glean information from several websites and collate that for you and give you that, that essay. So that's what we're looking to these things to do, which means we're going to lean on them quite heavily. Hmm. Uh, and um, when they're wrong, that's a problem. <clears throat> so I think we need, we need to get into one of those, or into that point where uh, Isaac Asimov had the laws of robotics. Mm -hmm. Those who've watched iRobot and, and read the series. So I think we need a series of laws of robotics. I've always assumed that they've just been applying them. Like, I've always in the back of my mind, I'm like, okay, <laughs> just as a good human, we're going to do that. But <laughs> no, well, apparently not. I forget not. that we're no. dropping nuclear bombs on each other. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Bing was trying to tell uh, <laughs> one of the journalists that uh, he didn't love his wife. 
He loved Bing. Oh, so, my So, yeah, that's word. quite creepy. Okay. Well, uh, sticking oh, really? to matters of, you know, we're talking Armageddon kind of stuff and matters of biblical proportions, mm. if you will. <laughs> there's, uh, apparently, there's a Bible out there, an ancient Hebrew Bible, a thousand-year-old one to be exact, that is about to go on auction and it's expected to fetch somewhere in the region of 50 million US dollars. Oh, my days. How important is this Bible? Where has it been? Who holds it? It in possession. It's been in private collections. Uh, it, in fact, it has an amazing history, and part of what makes this Bible so valuable is that the annotations in, in the Bible at various times by owners, they, they've jotted things in the margins. So that history becomes part of it. Mm. But, but the book itself is the earliest known example of a book format. Hebrew Bible. Everything before that was scrolls, so like the Dead Sea Scrolls. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so this dates back to the 9th or the 10th century, so literally a thousand plus years, which in itself is incredible. It's been in private hands, so it's been incredibly well preserved. It is a thing of beauty. I think what I like about it is that, as you say, could potentially fetch anywhere towards a billion rand. The idea that in this era <laughs> where you've got all these people spending all this money on arms and on death, yeah. the idea that we're going to spend a lot of money on something of beauty, something that has emotional value, I really like that. that that's quite heartwarming for me. A spiritual anchor. I love wow. that. Wow. Would you cop it? For 50 million bucks? 50, yeah. <laughs> oh, look, I'd start at 40. <laughs> and then we're just going to work. Uh, I don't know, why not, how, how do you approach um, that kind of an auction? Let us know. Uh, Roy, thank you so much. I always feel light. I must say, I was sinking into the chair under the financial weight of our previous discussion, but starting to feel a little bit freer. Thank you so much, my man. What a way to start the week. You can continue to chew on the gristle of the news at the moment, especially as we head towards our budget speed this week. We love to hear from you. 063 408 8863. What are the matters that are affecting you the most? We'd love to hear from you.